Into the Spider-Verse is my brand new addiction and it should be yours too. It doesn't even really need to be looked at from a racial lens, it's genuinely just a really good movie. I'm jumping the gun, sure, but it's important that I establish all of this before I go into why this movie means so much to me and other minorities seeking strong representation in their media. So uh... Hey, let's talk about it. <laughs> it's called Operation Black Steel. We should call We're it. We're calling it Operation Black Steel. I like that name. We're not changing it. As young black people, we often find ourselves going through what is essentially an identity crisis. Specifically, diaspora children struggling to find their place in the world. And because these people are part of the diaspora, finding acceptance becomes a real issue. You're too black to be accepted into your new home, but you're not black enough to be accepted by your own people. And this isn't even exclusively a black concept, you know, Hispanics, Asians and many other ethnic groups experience similar things. And what doesn't help is when you look at the television screen and there's nothing. Nothing but an approximation of who you are. I am dark skinned and bald, so I hate you and I hate Jesus. The desire for representation is often frowned upon because, according to some, the need to see someone who looks like you on a TV screen is a superficial desire. It isn't, and I think that argument tends to ignore just how big of a factor the media plays into the overall image of black people. The media we consume controls us, involuntarily, regardless of whether you think it does or it doesn't. If you turn on your TV and you flip to BET and all you see are black people acting like fools your entire life, then it's very likely that you're gonna grow up and think black people are all fools, even after you eventually meet them. We are shaped by our own experiences and our past and the things we engage with and digital media has only grown exponentially in influence throughout the years and it will only continue to grow. Now as to whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, that's that's not really for me to say. But what it does do is, is that it puts us in a place where we need to be responsible with the images that we put in the faces of people and acknowledge the effect that they can have. You know, if, 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 if black women grow up surrounded by straight haired Barbie dolls then they'll probably grow up and see their natural hair as ugly and you know, spend the rest of their lives trying to adhere to this Eurocentric standard of beauty. If black boys grow up and the only prominent figure in their lives are, well, niggas, then you know, that's all they're gonna try and imitate. You know, the media we put out has power. It has power to inspire, it has power to influence, and it has the power to make positive changes in the lives of people. But again, you know, how does that relate to Spider-Verse? It's because Spider-Verse is good for image. Miles Morales, his family, his culture, and his love for who he is, it's, it's positive. Oh man, okay. So I, I really like this movie, so I'm a, I'm, I'm a gush for a bit. You know, Miles loves who he is and where he comes from. You know, instead of packing for school, he's drawing tags on stickers so he can slap them around town. You know, the opening scene of him walking around town makes it so clear that he loves the place and he loves the music and he loves the culture. You know, it's, it's, ah, oh, it's, it's done so well. This is placed in stark contrast with Miles' interactions in his new school. You know, they're all stilted, there's no music, there's no fun in the streets, and there's no quippy lines or comebacks. Tie your shoes, nigga. <laughs> it's important to note this divide between who Miles is when he feels at home and who Miles is when he's at this elitist school. You know, he acts the same, but the reception is different. You know, Miles doesn't once attempt to conform or deny who he is early on in this movie. The problem isn't Miles as an individual, it's that the culture is different, the standard is different. Almost everyone here acts the exact same and has this elitist air to them, so so when Miles tries to differentiate by being himself, you know, he's shut down with silence and stares. So it's very much the story of this young teen struggling to be himself in a new environment, it, you know, it's... And I think that's ultimately what makes Miles really palatable to people of all ages, races and cultural backgrounds. That said, I'm black, so I can identify with the character on screen, but have my own personal takeaway from the story they're trying to tell. And in order to understand it, we need to have some context. A few years ago, there was a leak from Sony's emails which strictly state that Spider-Man needed to be a straight white male. In addition, Stan Lee went on to say that he didn't see the issue of staying true to what the character has always been. Before you guys start, give me a minute. I'm mixed on this perspective because I understand that Peter Parker is a character that has been defined for years and years. And if you change major things about who he is, you can damage the image of what Spider-Man is. I understand why it's a thing. People need to be able to look and say, yeah, that's Spider-Man, or to be specific, yeah, that's Peter Parker. Now, as to whether or not race and sexuality are necessarily damaging traits, I mean, <laughs> I was up for debate. Here's where it becomes an issue, and it isn't necessarily the fault of the corporation. The image of Spider-Man is intrinsically tied to Peter Parker, meaning, as much as people will say these black and Latino kids can pretend to be Spider-Man underneath the mask, I mean, they're not stupid. They already know who's underneath the mask. And here's what I mean. If you look at this, and then you look at this, which one looks more like Spider-Man? Give me a minute. Now does this mean I disagree with Sony's decision? 
Interestingly, uh, no. Because simply said, if Peter Parker was made black, then he would quite literally be a victim of tokenism. He would be the token black Spider-Man. And I'm not interested in seeing black Peter Parker pandering. Uh, this one's for the niggas, but <laughs> we already know who the real Spider-Man is. He's <laughs> like, kind of like doing that. And from what I've read, that's essentially what Miles Morales was in the original comics. There's a Caucasian Spider-Man, and then there's the black Spider-Man. There's Peter Parker, the Spider-Man, and then there's Miles Morales, the other Spider-Man. And because Peter Parker, the Caucasian, is synonymous with Spider-Man, Miles' whole identity as Spider-Man is relative to how similar he is to Peter. Now that shouldn't be true, and it isn't as illustrated by the movie, but it demonstrates this issue that a lot of minorities go through in which they're trying to adhere to this whitened standard. Whether it be a job interview, adjusting to a new place, or interacting with your boss, the impact of the global system of white supremacy on coloured people is that being labelled white is seen as default. And in order to get anywhere in life, you need to reject almost everything that makes you what you are and blend in. There's this kind of encompassing idea of conformity in black communities, and it's always kind of it's always kind of baffled me. Like here's some really common examples, but stuff like stuff like raising the pitch of our voices or putting on fake accents and pretending you have no affiliation with the place you come from in front of white people or people of power. Don't get it twisted, it's generational and it happens a lot. It almost feels like this acknowledgement that your blackness and identity is, is a hindrance. So we wear these masks that don't belong to us and don't fit in the hopes that with enough posturing, we'll become the very thing we're pretending to be. I think it's dumb, but whatever. It's not that we're trying to be white, it's that it's just many black people have become so accustomed to associating success with white people that they attempt to imitate it and it, it it's all really silly. Into the Spider-Verse naturally isn't directly exploring these ideas, but with stuff like this in mind as a backdrop, it makes the narrative presented with Miles much more compelling to me. Miles doesn't believe that being himself will make him Spider-Man, because his definition of Spider-Man is synonymous with Peter Parker, when in reality what makes him an amazing Spider-Man is everything that makes him unique. You know, the Brooklyn boy is cool, you know, he draws three iron walls, you know, his dad is a semi-embarrassing police officer, you know, he, he has similarities to Peter, but that's that's not why he's good, nah, it's, it's not. <laughs> he's good for image because he's different, you know, he's not a token black Spider-Man. He isn't someone in Peter Parker's costume, he's he's Miles Morales, his very own Spider-Man. And the entirety of this movie is about him coming to terms with this. You know, if a pig can be Spider-Man, then you know, anyone can. I've been Spider-Man 30 years! But if I can just gush for a moment, this movie, this movie's incredible. Look at how upbeat the opening scene is. There's so much personality in how Miles just haphazardly puts on his bag and starts skidding around Brooklyn, slapping tags and getting arrested. Right. The relationship between his dad and his uncle is great because it does an amazing job at representing the dichotomy of what Miles is and what the great expectations are. This idea that if Miles wants to reach those great expectations, he can't be like his uncle. But the irony is that Miles feels most like himself when he's around his uncle. So the immediate juxtaposition is made clear. If Miles wants to reach those great expectations, he can't be himself. And that core idea does an amazing job at driving the narrative of the film. The only way to get all the answers wrong is to know which answers are right. You're trying to quit. And I'm not gonna let you. And the second he realizes that he needs to be Spider-Man to avenge Peter Parker, he stops trying to be himself and instead tries to imitate Peter Parker. He doesn't see great expectations and his own identity as concepts that can be one and the same, intrinsically tied. You know, when they can, you know, he... He just has to take that leap. This movie has become one of my latest obsessions, to be honest. Uh, I love seeing Miles trying to play it cool with his uncle. I love seeing Miles struggle with his Spider-Man powers and fitting in school. I love the soundtrack. I love how the score has like hip-hop elements, which help further emphasize that this is Miles' movie. Like it feels, I love the look and I love the animation of the movie. It feels so good. It's, it's like, the little details like comic strip lines in the background or visible line effects when characters are interacting with things or that weird 3D-ish effect they add when things get really intense. Like, this, movie's, this movie's really good. What is it called? I love how the second Peter really juxtaposes the original and how his interactions with Miles tend to be comedic and heartwarming at the same time. In fact, can, can we even go into that? This movie this movie's really, really funny. Like It has no right to be funny, but it's really, it's really funny. I love this noir Spider-Man and his fascination with the Rubik's Cube, you know, I love Porky's cartoonish antics and while I think Gwen enrolling in the school doesn't really make any sense, I still really enjoyed her character for what it was. I, 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 I don't like her though, she, she sucks, I'm, I'm sorry, she, she's the only thing I didn't like, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, all the other characters are either there for the plot or they're entertaining. This is just anime and I like anime but 
I mean, uh, and this scene of Spider-Man jumping off the building, I swear down, this movie is so good. It has so much love put into it, and it's honest to God an amazing animated movie. And it's exactly what I wanted. It has style, it has heart, and it has substance. And because of its message, it really did resonate with me and hopefully many others. Spider-Man can be different. He can be black, he can be Latino, and he doesn't have to fit this industry standard look. He, he, he can still be a hero and in his own way. And similarly, you can achieve whatever you want to in your own way. This movie, despite the connections I've made to it, isn't about race, or isn't inherently about race. But that's the whole point, you know, these stories don't have to be all about revolution and activism and being on the streets. Because once again, that's not all black people are. Miles Morales works because despite his superpowers, he's written in a way that feels real. As a child undergoing these issues and this fish out of war story, learning to embrace himself. Now as to whether or not that's partially due to the inherent strength of the Spider-Man story or the creative liberties taken with Miles' character, I wouldn't be able to tell you. You know, Walter Mosley would say that the Spider-Man story has always lent itself to people of colour. I'm not sure how much I agree with it, but it's an interesting perspective. The first black superhero is Spider-Man. He lives in a one-parent house and it's not even his parent. Is it, you know, I'm not reading this, what the hell? And so the more images that we see like this that in the media, the more we can inspire minority groups to pursue and believe in their dreams and the more we can help change the image. Remember, if you can control perception, then you can control reality. Miles Morales is a beacon of hope in this new age of diversifying our media, and it's clear that Into the Spider-Verse is an amazing success with beautiful animation, scenery, writing, and a stunning soundtrack. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. If you haven't watched it, go see it. Done both, do it again. I'm not about to delude people into thinking the world is in their hands because of a movie, because it's not. The world still hasn't been formed with your best interests at heart, the image of black people still hasn't been resolved, and very often, the mask they want you to wear won't be made for you. But that doesn't mean you have to conform. That doesn't mean you can't make it on your own. All you need is the courage to wear the mask the way you want to. Wear it the only way you can. You know, all it takes is a leap of faith. The courage to jump off that roof, grab danger by the shoulder and go, hey, this has been Operation Black Steel. Stay real. Don't do it like I did. You gotta do it like you.